Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel, Fishing AT. It's uh, Thursday, 1st of December, and welcome to a very, very quiet and foggy Bristol Channel. I'm back at Clevedon, fishing the rock ledges above Lady Bay. Um, at the same mark I fished the last time. So hopefully, uh, if you watch that video, um, I'll try and get something other than congas, which I had uh, quite a few of on that trip. Um, it's eerily quiet here. It's so, so spooky. There is no birds, no noise, nothing, no wind. It's uh, just me and the sea, um, which is great. I love it. Oh, there we go. There's some birds just flew over just to spoil my party. Um, the tide's coming in. Um, low water was half past six this morning. It's now uh, nine o'clock. And so we're well into the flood. I haven't bothered setting up lower down. I'm on the sort of middle, the middle ledge here. If you can remember the mark but below the tree, the big tree is up there on the on the, the side. And high water is uh, one o'clock, and um, we've got a little bit more tide uh, than what we had last time. So we've got uh, low water was about 3.8 meters, and high is about 10 and a half. So we've got uh, say seven seven meters about 22, 23 feet of uh, tidal range today. The plan is to fish up to high, obviously, one o'clock, and then I'm probably gonna fish um, two or three hours of the ebb um, so that I don't have to move too far and uh, won't be fishing into, into darkness uh, tonight. Um, baits are pretty much the leftover baits that I had from Monday's trip to Chesil. So I've got ragworm and lugworm that I've just kept in the fridge and that's, uh, that's sort of survived relatively okay. I just put them in with a bit of cold seawater in a tray and uh, that's, that's not too bad. So I'm going to fish lug and squid or rag and squid on my red rod. And then on the, the other rod, the grey rod, I've got a whole squid uh, with an extra squid head uh, wrapped on that. So uh, fishing 3.0 pulley panels. Um, slightly longer. I'm probably going to go for about two and a half feet um, length on on the pulleys today, and we'll see what uh, what we can uh, what we can bring out. Um, hopefully, I'm still waiting for. I've never had a decent cod here, and when I say decent, I mean over a couple of pounds. So fingers crossed. There's always well, there's always the chance, isn't there? We'll see what comes along, but basically it's just nice to be out for the second time uh, in the week. <sighs> Something there. Expecting to catch something so early. Huh. Oh, oh, now it's started to go. Oh, yeah. I don't think it liked the thought of being pulled in. I'm just going to get him on there and I'm just going to get a disgorger and I'll unhook him down the bottom. Well here we are, it's a conger. Uh, he's probably, he's probably two and a half, three pounds. Gave a good account of himself. I'm fishing um, 3.0 um, Vareeris Big Mouth Extras there, but on the top hook I'm using, well, I've recently I've been using Chinoo's or Circle Hook, and you can see on the, the, the Chinoo there, he's hooked right in the top uh, of the bottom, the bottom lip. So 
nice clean hook, not uh, not deep hooked. And I'm really, really pleased with that. A good start to the session. So I get him unhooked and put back. So bait wise, as I said, I've still got this lug from Monday. So uh, this lug is uh, three days old. Um, when I got back from Chesil Monday night, put it in the fridge in a small tray with a little bit of sea water, not completely covering them, just enough to damp them. And as you can see, actually it's um, survived pretty okay, considering the shop uh, has probably had it in their sort of tanks or their refrigerators and trays over the weekend as well. Um, so yeah, we've got the refrigerator on a medium sort of setting, middle shelf, and that's uh, quite pleased actually with that. That's uh, quite, uh, quite, uh, quite good. The rag, you generally tell with rag, they sort of lose that readiness and they go quite uh, green. So even though they're, they've got a bit of life in them, they, I've always found that they tend to survive a little less better. But again, I uh, treated them the same, middle shelf in the fridge, a little bit of seawater on them, covered them with a bit of newspaper. And well, I think they're more than adequate for, for today. And again, a typical sort of bait, I just, pile the ragworm on here um, a new well, bait that doesn't get sort of eaten from the previous cast I just push up and uh, just tip off with a fresher rag and a little bit of squid on there so see my hand that's uh, probably was that about nine inches on the on the bait there that's typically what I've been what I've been using um, when I fished here the last time, obviously I had lots of congas and I think on that uh, it was a Friday, a week last Friday and I uh, got back to the house and um, Dean Booker, if anybody follows Dean Booker on uh, um, YouTube, he uh, has got a Veals mail, mail order channel, VMO channel um, and he'd fished here, uh, I think the Sunday before I was here and he'd uh, got a fantastic video on YouTube to really show what a a good angler can do. He pulled out some blonde rays. I think he had a thorn back, but certainly the blonde rays were a surprise to me. I've never heard of them being caught here. Certainly, I've never caught. Um, oh, well, I've never caught a ray here. So, uh, but uh, I think it was Dean's first time, and that's a great video to to watch. Um, he's uh, very open with his with his tactics about what he does, how he fishes. Uh, it's got a beautiful cast in action. If you want to watch someone who has a really smooth uh, cast, then Dean is Dean is your man. Great video and uh, some good tips on, uh, on on fishing here, and certainly some great fish on that video. So um, yeah, that's uh, sort of renewed. I didn't think I'd be able to get a, a blonde here. Thought they were more the preserve of uh, uh, over on the Welsh side and, and lower down the Bristol Channel, but. Uh, there's always hope for us uh, medium, mediocre type anglers. Hopefully we can try and uh, try and catch one uh, here. So um, that's why obviously I got the, the, the bigger squid baits. I think uh, he caught his on uh, squid and bluey, but he has a super cast. So he's probably putting it out a, a, fair, a fair distance um, onto the sand here. Um, but hopefully these calmer conditions, I say there might be a chance of of a of, of a ray but don't hold your fingers well hold your fingers crossed um i'll uh, if i get one well that'll be a brucey bonus so after that first bite things are back to normality nice and quiet the seagulls have made the appearance that we hear the last time so they're they're around hoping for a free squid but i haven't got a lot of squid bait today so uh, they won't be getting any freebies uh, unless they want the cast offs from my hooks and the mist and fog is uh, still persisting and I think it's probably going to be with us for most of the day. I think the wind isn't forecast to actually get up at all. There's virtually no, no breeze at all here uh, today. I think on my, uh, my last chisel video I, uh, I took home that big pouting, never eaten pouting before. And I can honestly say it's a decent fish to eat. I uh, took the fillets off. I put them in a little bit of breadcrumbs and uh, flour and egg and I fried them, lightly fried them yesterday and they were lovely. So uh, my sort of thought process that pout in, we, when we were kids, this is 40 odd years ago, we used to call them stink alive because they would, 
if you kept them they would really stink and just be generally pretty horrible sort of things um, but I uh, watched a, a catch and cook video fish disco uh, down at Chesil and he made he made it from scratch actually he made a, uh, a fish sandwich he made the bread and he used pouting as the as the as the fish uh, in the sandwich and uh, I thought oh, okay I'll give that a go not making it obviously just just catching it and then cooking it at home and it, it was nice and the only advice I had on the on the sort of feed on my uh, on my video was that you have to eat it within two or three days because the taste can taint a little bit uh, after that so uh, thoroughly recommend it nice white fish good fillets um, fried them lightly beautiful beautiful so uh, if I catch and have to take a, a pout again then I know that it's a, it's a good thing to eat. Um, I know it, it's in the angling press quite a bit and media quite a bit really about sort of litter and rubbish being left at sort of fishing marks around the UK. But I have to say that on the two trips I've been here at Clevedon, I've been impressed about how clean the mark is actually. I've just, in the two trips, I've just picked up one piece of stray line about three foot long and that's it. So uh, if you do come here, I don't know whether they have any organised cleans here or whatever, but please respect the mark as, as ever we should all do as sensible people, as sensible adults, yeah, who, 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 who fish. But there are other, you know, dog walkers here and, and other people who'd like just to come on and do walking. So respect the mark. But it's nice to see a mark that is actually being looked after by the anglers because it is fish heavy, I know that. So, you know, thank you to those who, who tidy up. And if you, if you see some rubbish, then obviously just try to make the effort to pick it up and take it back with you. There are litter bins on, on Bay Road, um, but again, be respectful there. You know, don't leave it full of stinking bait and stuff like that, you know, take stuff like that home. Though again, those bins are for the general public, but if you find general rubbish around the mark, yeah, use the bins at the end of Bay Road there. Um, but. Keep up the good work guys and, and don't let us all down, you know, fishing is, uh, is uh, we're lucky it's free, you know, the sea angling and we don't want unwanted pressure or, or, or media for, for the crappy bunch of people who sometimes uh, do us a little bit of uh, disrespect to the marks and stuff like that. So good job everyone, thank you. <sighs> Oh, I just wanted to change the bait and I was snagged. It's very heavy. I'm not sure if there's a, a fish there or whether I've just got a, a big lump of weed. Oh, <laughs> baby conga. see that bite from him. He's a tiny one. He's taken on the bottom the bottom hook on a rag and squid pulley. So uh, let's get him unhooked and put back in. So there you are. Um, my last seven fish now at Lady Bay. All been congas. Not complaining but uh, hopefully there are other species here too. That's uh, half past ten, so uh, that's uh, about four hours after after low. Let's bait up and cast out again. You can see that on the blue rod here, the grey rod here, it's a bite. Oh, I'm going to bring this one in. I've been tapping away for a bit. Good fish here. Oh, my GoPro is turning itself off. So hopefully I'll get this on camera. Uh, go 
quite a gentle bite again oh sorry about that my GoPro was turning itself off because of battery problems again uh, well it was just a, a small Congo only a couple of pounds I thought it felt a little bit different but uh, obviously in the tide gave a good account of himself he took squid uh, he's hooked on the the, the Chinu top hook again. I'll have to just get my disgorger and uh, and get him unhooked. But uh, eight congas in a row now on the mark. Three today, five the last time. We'll uh, get this little boy uh, unhooked and put back. Well, typical sort of size of the recent congas I've been having. And they are strong little things. Anyway, point him back to the water. Off you go. There we go. And he's off. Well, it's about um, half an hour to top of the tide. It's quite quiet actually. Um, just the three congas so far. Um, <clears throat> I've just had to move up a few meters up the. The rocks not to the very top um, hopefully there's enough I've got enough space here that I can um, still fish comfortably no risk really of the water there's no very uh, there's no swell or nothing no wind no waves so you just gotta make sure you don't fall trip and fall in um, there's a little bit of tidal pull. Um, I'm using about 190 grams of lead, or so six, seven ounces, something like that. It isn't pulling particularly hard on the on the flood. I think uh, on the ebb it will probably pull a little bit harder. Um, I think that tends to be my uh, my experience. A couple of times I've lost my rods go over, so I've got the drag set uh, quite loose, so that if um, there is pressure on the line. The line is taken rather than the rod dress falling over and I can't find any rocks as such loose rocks to uh, wedge me legs and me tripod in. So I had to look around when I first arrived, I couldn't find anything. So um, yeah, I've got my drag relatively loose. Obviously the, the line isn't coming off in the normal tide, but um, if it does pick up or a bit of weed lands on the line, then um, it's safe that the rod won't, uh, won't go over. So as I say, you're almost top of the tide. Um, gonna probably fish till about four o'clock, I think, and another three hours or so, three and a half hours. And then uh, probably my bait will be pretty much gone by then. And also the tide will be back at a state where I was when I, when I practically arrived. So uh, that's uh, a good sort of six, seven hours fishing. Well, the tide is ebbing now. I've just gone past uh, quarter past one. I don't think that might not come out, but there's a quite a sizable branch floating down there with the tide. Um, another reason why have your ratchet set if you're away from your rod, you never quite know what's going to drift into it. Fishing still remains very quiet. Last fish was about uh, two and a half hours ago so um, good positive start three three fish quite quickly uh, this morning but been very quiet for the last uh, two and a half uh, two and a half hours gonna give it actually another two and a half hours fish till about four o'clock and then uh, that would be uh, that would be my lot for uh, for this week the opportunity to thank everybody who uh, continues to watch and uh, comment on the videos. I try to, well, I do answer all comments, uh, so thank you for that. Appreciate the feedback and uh, the observations. It's nice to uh, engage with other anglers um, from different parts of the country. So uh, thank you for the for the comments and the and the watching, and I'll uh, hopefully. 
well, weather depending, I'll be able to get out again uh, next week somewhere. Um, I've had a few questions about the two rods I use, the Daiwa Tournament, the one on the left, and the Daiwa Saltus, the one on the right. Uh, I've made observations that the, um, the tournament has a much smoother action, a better, a better casting uh, response for, for me, a bit more give in the, in the rod. And you can see in the tip there as well how both reels are probably tightened to where I want them. And you can see that the tournament uh, left rod gives you a, a, better, a better curve, uh, something that well, I quite like that. I don't like a, a rod too straight because it looks like you've perhaps got a slack line, but better tip sensitivity on the um, on the Dio tournament rod compared to the Saltist. Well. Oh. My conga jinx has been broken. Again, huh. I make a habit of this. I uh, was winding in just to change the bait, and there we have a. There's actually a reasonable white in for for me. So uh, yeah, my run of eight congas broken. So let's uh, just unhook this white in and put him back. Just show you, he's a. He's actually quite a good, quite a good size, probably 12 inches or so. So let's uh, let's put him back in, and hopefully he'll uh, survive to grow a little bit bigger. Although he's barely up at the moment. There we go. Oh, yep, he kicked off. Fingers crossed, he'll survive to fight another day. Well, it's about an hour now after the ebb has started and uh, really starting to pull hard now. So uh, is it only a 10 and a half meter tide? I've got uh, probably seven ounces on and you can see ripping past there pretty fast. And actually, even though I'm casting well at tide, my probably lines at the moment are probably at least 11 o'clock so I cast it about 2 o'clock up tide and uh, they swung round to about 11 o'clock so pulling really really hard just on this mark something to bear in mind and if you come here on a something like a 12 meter tide on Clevedon scale then uh, well I think you you either need to fish very close in and run the risk obviously of, of snagging or you put a big lead and uh, bury it in hard and uh, you know have your rod rest well set because as I say it does it does charge through here um, certainly uh, for a couple of hours now so this is not a big tide for here I'd say because you can see the tide actually didn't get up to uh, the rock pool here and actually the water, the weed is probably at least another metre and a half further up so uh, you still get a you know, 12, 12 and a half metre tide here and that uh, pulls like a train so uh, just something to, uh, to, to, to think about just while I've got uh, the, the video rolling, just again, I uh, had the bait earlier this week from Real Fun Fishing in Port Zed. There's also uh, Oliver's Angling in Clevedon that does good bait, good service. So if you're not from the area and you're coming down, try to go into those shops and support the local uh, angling guys. Um, I know I can be guilty, I buy a lot of my tackle online because it's just so convenient. I don't buy bait online, um, but uh, you know, if you're in the area and you're coming down, I think both of them uh, tend to open 7, 7.30. So uh, please try to support the local angling shops because without these guys, you know, it's harder for us to, 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 to get bait and, uh, and to get those little bits of tackle we, uh, we like to buy every now and then.
I haven't said today, but I did say on my last uh, video, I don't use rotten bottoms here, even though, uh, well, it, there's about 20, 20 odd yards of, of rocks in front of me and then you're onto sand. So I just use a straight uh, pulley there, as you can see. Um, the snood is a 50 pound um, amnesia today and I've got about a 90 pound Trabuco uh, main trace and I've actually uh, just upped the lead size to 8 ounces to combat this, uh, this tide at the moment so uh, yeah no rotten bottoms um, but obviously that's just my personal choice So it's two hours after high tide and again really other than that white in on the an hour or so ago still very quiet baits untouched and uh, tide still pulling very strong I'm going to give it one more hour and then I'm going to call it a day got a bite here on the left hand rod I cast this one quite short. Yeah, cast it quite short. Uh, just to try and get it out of the tide a little bit. Hopefully not too short that I'm in the in the rocks. A lot of slack line here. Oh no. Oh yeah, it might be there. Yeah. Oh. oh this feels a little bit different. Actually feels like it tugging a bit. And said that might be uh, oh my god <laughs> look at that oh no bugger <laughs> he dropped off I have to try and go and get uh, that one oh Is it? Yes, it is. Yeah, just a small one. Try and jump over here. Ah. Oh. Well, there you go. There's a little Bristol Channel cod. 
He's only, uh, he's probably about 14 inches. Too small to keep, but, ah, that's made my day. I'm going to put him, put him back because uh, it's good for him to, to go back. Here we go, mate. Off he goes. Well, there you go. And that's one of the perils of fishing here. Um, you can see probably two and a half hours after low water. And obviously I'm fishing up high and I've had to clamber down to try and recover a fish I've dropped. So, uh, well, that was a shorter cast actually. So uh, that's maybe something to try next time. Is uh, I dropped it shorter, primarily just to try and beat the uh, the pull. That was pretty horrendous. A lot of weed and other stuff in the water. So uh, yeah, that was uh, that was good and a nice uh, nice bite and a nice fish to finish the day. Well, that's the end of the the session. It's uh, half past three. Uh, two and a half hours after high water, so basically um, tied pretty much in the same position it was when I uh, when I arrived. Um, had a good a good session. In the end, uh, three congas, white in, and just that surprise little cod at the end. Something different. Anyway, at least it wasn't uh, you know my run of eight congas broken with a white in and a, and a cod. Wouldn't mind having a run of eight cod. Anyway, that mist hasn't uh, lifted all day. It's getting quite chilly. I don't think it's got much above four or five degrees today. I got six, seven layers on, on top, freezing. Time to uh, make that trek back and uh, warm up a little bit, get in the van and drive home. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed uh, the fishing today at Lady Bay in Clevedon. Um, Nice to catch stuff, you know, and uh, yeah, um, just uh, a variety of species. And uh, actually, that's probably not far off the biggest cod I've caught here. But uh, since I restarted fishing in uh, after after COVID, so take care, everybody. Um, it's almost Christmas, so hopefully, all Santa will bring you some new tackle, you know, new nice fancy rods and reels. You know, make sure you. Uh, you take care when you're out and about and enjoy enjoy uh, fishing and thanks for watching and we'll see you all again soon bye now